Good morning, everyone. My name is Noan Dwe. I'm one of the consultants in the Mtato Hospital Complex, and I'm based at Mtato Regional Hospital. So I'm so excited that we've got such a enthusiastic response to this workshop. And it's really encouraging to see such a growing interest in regional anesthesia. So I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, but I hope that you still find this helpful. And I thought that I'd just share video for the first slide so that you can become more familiar. We are going to start with discussing the anatomy. The nerve roots that make up the sciatic nerve are the L4 to the S3 nerve roots. And this nerve is one of the widest nerves in the body and it measures two centimeters wide, as you can see in this beautiful dissection. Its course is along the posterior aspect of the thigh, and when it reaches the popliteal fossa, it then bifurcates into the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve. This is a close-up of the popliteal fossa on the posterior aspect of the leg. As you can see, we have the sciatic nerve that's now divided into its branches, being the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve. So it's important to see the relevant anatomy relative to the vessels. So the nerve runs laterally to the vessels and also another important structure to be mindful of are the muscles on either side of the nerve structures. This becomes important during ultrasound scanning. The popliteal sciatic nerve innervates most of the structures below the knee. As you can see, it covers most of the muscles in the lower aspects of the leg, as well as the osteotomes. In terms of sensory innovation, it's mostly on the lateral aspect, um, and the medial aspect is covered by the saphenous nerve. This then leads us to the indications for the popliteal sciatic nerve block. So this block, provides good analgesia and anesthesia for distal, tibial, and fibular orifs, as well as ankle surgery, corrective foot surgery, as well as foot debridements and Achilles tendon repairs. Now onto the technique. So the first technique is the posterior approach where the patient can be positioned in the lateral position. And this is by far, by far my most preferred approach. And this is because it lends itself um, ergonomically to ease of use. And with this approach, you can have the in-plane needle technique. And this is particularly helpful when the patient is post-surgery or even pre-surgery because they can mobilize themselves onto the side. Then there's also the posterior approach um, with the patient in the prone position. So for novice um, users of this block, this is an easy approach, but it can be quite challenging to position the patient in the prone position, especially if they post anesthesia, for instance, um, or post surgery, because then you might need some manpower to get them into that position. So in terms of equipment, we need to prepare our linear probe. We have to have a sleeve, a sterile one preferably, to cover the probe and protect it. Ultrasound gel, a 50 to 100 millimeter short bevel uh, insulated stimulator needle, as well as a peripheral nerve stimulator, injection pressure monitor, as well as sterile gloves. These images are depicting the posterior approach, 
which can either be the in-plane lateral approach, where you approach the nerve from the lateral aspects of the thigh and towards the nerve bundle. Secondly, you can do an out-of-plane approach. So the benefit of this is that there's fewer muscles that are traversed by the needle and therefore making this less painful. But the out-of-plane approach can be a bit challenging as you can't always see the needle tip and it's a little bit tricky to be able to discern where your needle tip is. So it's a skill that needs some acquiring and honing. And then lastly, you can also have the in-plane medial approach. So this can also be a beneficial approach in that sometimes the common perineal nerve is difficult to visualize um, under SONA. So then it runs the risk of it being transect by the needle. This then can be avoided by coming in from the medial aspect where you can easily see the medial tibial nerve and come in between the two nerves. So the sciatic nerve is unique in that it has this peri paraneural sheath that's also called a blocker's sheath that surrounds both nerves and encases both of them. And the analogy that is commonly used is that it's analogous to a pair of trousers. And the trunk being the, the, the body of the sciatic nerve before it diverges. And then this point here, <laughs> the crotch being the bifurcation point. So this is considered the optimal part of needle placement for infiltration of local anesthetic. Because at this point, the two nerves are close to each other, but not touching, while still being encased within this perineal sheath. So this is the ideal position that you want to place your local anesthetic in. So when you're scanning, the important landmarks that you have to identify is that the ultrasound probe first needs to be placed in the popliteal crease. And when you are in this region, you first have to identify the popliteal artery, and it's usually pulsatile. Then lateral to that, you're going to see the sciatic nerve, and ideally it should still um, have both nerves visible. So the common peroneal peroneal nerve is not usually very clear um, in the popliteal fossa and one needs to scan a bit more approximately about 10 centimeters before you can see the common peroneal nerve coming back to back up to form the sciatic. So you want to catch it like I said at the point where the two nerves diverge. So this picture is depicting the posterior approach. So either coming from the lateral aspect with an in-plane approach or coming from this aspect where it's an outer plane. But just to note that with an outer plane, you don't usually see the entire shaft of the needle. So this is a superimposed image. You usually just see the tip. Another approach that's been described is the lateral approach with the patient lying supine, but with the injection point um, and the lateral aspect of the thigh. So this can be technically challenging and a little bit awkward. Um, and I haven't quite mastered it because you're now pressing the probe up into the patient and ergonomically, you can't always adjust this so that you're comfortable. So I wouldn't recommend this as the first point of call, um, especially for a novice um, um, operator. And I'd rather suggest that you use either the lateral or the prone positioning. So this image is then depicting the 
lateral insertion point of the needle. As you can see, the needle coming in from the lateral aspect of the thigh. And this is the other technique that's, the, that's been described. Um, at this point, I'd also like to mention that maybe you have come across the other newly described um, curvilinear lateral approach or the so-called CALP um, sciatic popliteal block. And this is a new technique, and I'm not going to be discussing it in this talk because I feel that for novice users, uh, this technique with a linear probe either of the patient in the lateral position or in the prone position um, provides quite good results. And in the case where you're struggling to position the patient, I'd rather err on the side of just getting more hands so that you can adequately um, position the patient as opposed to then leaving the patient supine because we want to have block success and ergonomics are really important in achieving that. So this image demonstrates the local anesthetic surrounding both nerves. And you want to see that it's encasing the nerves and within the perineural sheath. So the amount of local anesthetic that's required is varies from different school of, schools of thought, uh, but definitely less when ultrasound is needed. So in the range of about 15 to 20 mils. Some people do say even up to 30 mils, but I feel that it's sufficient to have it just surrounding both nerves. So this video is depicting the adequate local anesthetic placement around the nerves. You can see the needle coming in from the lateral aspect, and you want to first pierce the perineural, sh perineural sheath, and then see the local anesthetic spread around both nerves within the sheath. And sometimes they refer to this as the donut sign with the local anesthetic around the nerves. So lastly, just some tips and tricks. Um, it can sometimes be difficult to visualize the nerve. So angling the probe towards the foot sometimes helps with that. Um, and this is because the nerve doesn't run parallel to the skin. And so the probe doesn't always catch it perpendicularly. But by angling it um, towards the foot, then you can um, improve that scanning. And this is because of the um, anisotropy of the nerve. And then the seesaw sign is used to also better visualize the nerves. And this is achieved by either active or passive dorsiflexion and plantar flexion of the foot to make the nerves dance. And what's seen is a seesaw pattern then of the nerves. And that brings me to the end of my talk. Um, yeah, happy scanning and practice, practice, practice. <laughs>